Great. Yeah, so super excited to be here today. Um, today, we're going to be talking about component-based authoring in Drupal and specifically walking through some of the aspects of the process that we use first to create and document design systems, then publish the elements of those design systems using front-end components. We'll dive into some of the technical details of uh, creating those components in a way that can be shared and distributed across the organization, a project, or even multiple projects. Then we'll talk about the tool that we use, Mercury Editor, um, being the kind of the primary tool that we use for empowering marketing and editorial teams to create content using that established design system, leveraging those front components. Uh, my name again is Justin. I'm the CEO and founder here at Atten. I'm joined today by two incredibly talented colleagues. Catherine Sutton, a senior UX designer, is going to talk again through kind of how we approach the design process and creating a cohesive system rather than simply a series of screens or pages. Then Brent Robbins, front-end developer here at Atten, um, is going to be talking through how we publish elements of a design system as front-end components, and he'll dive into some of the technical details for doing that. And then I'll talk a little bit about Mercury Editor as a tool, again, for empowering marketing and editorial teams, for creating content, leveraging that design system, uh, using those front-end components. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Catherine to talk through uh, our approach to design. Thank you so much, Justin. Hi, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Catherine Sutton, pronouns are she, her, and I am the senior UX UI designer at Atten Design Group. Today, I'm going to talk through the collaborative design process that we have here at Atten that allows us to create beautiful, editable sites at varying levels of complexity and customization. We'll be using a recently launched project called Neutrino Day as a case study. To begin discussing our creative pro process, I must start with Atten's fundamental design philosophy. Although every project that comes to the door at Atten is unique with its own set of goals, audiences, complex needs, identity, and so forth, finding out about what makes a project really interesting and unique is how we get inspired and create something that is authentic and resonates with users. To accomplish this, there are four motives that permeate throughout our process and empower us to be successful. First, the process that we will use for the project must be adaptable. As I mentioned earlier, we respect the unique potential of every single project. We don't like to implement cookie cutter approaches at all. So rather, our process and deliverables are suited to meet the client's budget, timeline, goals, users, and technology needs and requirements. Secondly, the work we create must be sustainable. Our clients invest a lot of time and resources into the work, which means that we as their creative partners must ensure the final product is easy to use with a flexible backend and a robust design system that can withstand content updates, changes in the web and user behavior for years to come. Thirdly, we require that all websites be accessible. That is, the content and design system are user-friendly with many, many use cases in mind available to people of all abilities. We lean on research-backed UX principles to guide our rationale and creativity. And finally, we must pursue design excellence to ensure the website remains relevant and credible over time. We strive not only to make the end product seamless, but we also want users to be delighted and pleasantly surprised when experiencing our work in the real world. These underlying principles are also what helps us to create component-based design systems. From end to end, every step and decision we make will have downstream effects on what we end up building and what tool the tools the client has in the final product. Now let's see how this philosophy shows up in a case study for a Sanford Underground Research Facility or SURF. SURF is the US's deepest underground research facility where advancements in science take place far below the surface of the planet. Today, they're working with an international team of over a thousand scientists and engineers from more than 30 countries to build the most advanced neutrino detection experiment in the world. SURF is also known as a center for teaching science to K-12 students, a patron of the local arts, and a steward of cultural and geological conservation. 
Our creative partnership with SURF has led to three fantastic projects touching on SURF's main brand, creating a new sister entity and their flagship annual science festival called Neutrino Day. Each year, Neutrino Day takes place across SURF's facilities and public sites in downtown Leed, South Dakota. SURF hosts a variety of events, including family-friendly science demonstrations, tours, hands-on activities, and more. SURF also hosts annual speakers, including leading scientists at SURF and well-known individuals in the science community. We collaborated with SURF to rebrand and build a new website for this long running event. Previously, the brand had taken on a new theme year after year. But in this engagement with SURF, we wanted to create a permanent identity for Neutrino Day and move away from ongoing themes. We kicked off the creative process with our senior digital strategist, Kelsey Boyd, facilitating conversations with the Neutrino Day team to gather context information, goals, and aspirations through a series of discovery discussions and workshops. Depending on the scope and complexity of the project, our strategy process could involve a number of different tools. So for us to get the best information for the case of Neutrino Day, this included stakeholder workshops, defining user personas, doing some brand analysis, and then defining narrative nodes, which dictate key messages, concepts, or content on a given page within the site map. Our, keys, uh, our key takeaways from this process included that audiences included families, children, science enthusiasts, educators, international and local scientists, volunteers, and Neutrino Day staff. The brand had to balance between being perceived as a celebratory family event and as a host for the science community to share work among peers. The brand had to grow with SURF's goals to expand the reach and variety of the event to include virtual talks, further incorporation of the arts, and involvement from the local community. Next, our information architecture work was greatly informed by all of these findings. We created a high-level site map and a series of wireframes to plan out the, the site and align on high-level messaging and brand goals. We also began to collaborate with our development team to align on functionality and backend architecture. With this, we began to get a glimpse of the necessary components for the upcoming design system. But before we could go much further into that, we had to start with establishing a new visual identity for Neutrino Day based on all of our previous findings. Our goal was to develop a brand system that would make celebrating Neutrino Day a joy from year to year. First, we created a logo, which was a super fun process that you can learn more about on our blog. Check it out at atten.io slash articles to learn more. Just like our strategy process kicks off with design discovery work, there's a little bit more discovery and exploration that takes place at Atten before we start putting together page comps. In a typical discovery workshop, we would cover the following. A visual identity audit, audit, which is assessing the client's visual identity to unlock possibilities for their brand to evolve during the project. Comparative analysis, discussing aspirational website design examples for color, navigation, typography, photography, graphic elements, and more. Peer analysis, discussing aspirational strategy and design approaches using example from the client's peers or adjacent sectors. And finally, looking at some design drivers or themes. So that is attributing values to the look and feel, such as bold, dynamic, energetic, elegant, or vibrant. After the initial discovery, we created two style tile options, which are essentially collages of design ideas. These let us share possible directions that align with the visual drivers that we identified earlier. Often when we create style tiles, we are looking for fundamental themes to define the look and feel. For Neutrino Day, we focused on creating a design language that elevated white space, displayed stylish typography, and utilized particle-based geometric shapes to provide color and a sense of whimsy to the work. Once we've aligned on those fundamentals, we move on to creating a design system. This system has to strike the right balance between manifesting strategic goals and decisions, and also creating a useful a series of flexible components. 
Typically for us, this means starting with a given context or use case that is essential to the user experience or the brand and then go from there. So in the case of Neutrino Day, we created a splashy homepage design to visualize our findings and discovery and strategy for their users, dictating what components would be created to construct that homepage. Next, we created designs for the functionality and features that made this site really exciting to use, including an interactive schedule of events, a blog, directory of speakers and staff, and updates for volunteers. Throughout this work, we used the fundamental elemental elements of the design system to create new components. And finally, we created a basic page layout that articulated all possible components and use cases for the authoring system. Along the way, we collaborated with our accessibility and QA specialist, Michaela, Michaela Liederman, to ensure the work met standards for accessibility, usability, and sustainability before moving into development. Our chief tool for all design deliverables is Figma, a collaborative design tool that is well suited for teams composed of designers, developers, project managers, clients, and stakeholders. We use Figma to create presentations, workshops, information architecture, wireframes, design, documentation, interactive prototypes, and more. After client approval, we moved into documenting the design system for development. The goal is to hand off components and layouts to our dev team so that the design system can be translated into a flexible authoring experience. We are super proud of the level of care and detail it takes to make all of our intentions for the design as clear as possible. On a fundamental level, we show color typography across various styles and screen sizes, UI icons and more. And on the component level, everything is also fully described such as fields, interactions, cards, teasers, forms, menus, calls to action, media and more. I hope for today that you can see the systems we build at Atten are born from a strategic, creative, and meaningful process. Without story, inspiration, or context, we would miss the mark with our clients and their users would end up with a product that would need to be redesigned after a short period of time. Our end goal for design systems is that they serve users of all kinds and elevate the client's brand to new potential. What's next for us to discuss is how the design system is translated into flexible, usable components in development. So for that, I'm going to pass things over to Brent. Thanks, Catherine. Again, my name is Brent Robbins, and I'm a front-end developer here at Atten. Today, I'm going to discuss why and how we use components at Atten in our front end development process. Just a fair warning, we're going to get deep into the technical content. Let me stop sharing. Hey, Brent. Yeah, yep. can you make sure? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, sure. That's the one I want to share. There we go. Okay. Um, okay, so components are the building blocks of design systems that Catherine just discussed. Components serve as building blocks for constructing the user interface of website websites or applications offering reusability and versatility. These UI components can include buttons, menus, cards, heroes, sliders, and other interactive elements. UI components are designed to be modular and reusable, which makes it easier to create a consistent and cohesive user interface across an entire website or application or even multiple projects. They can easily be customized and styled to match the overall design of the site or application. Catherine talked about adaptability, sustainability, and accessibility as fundamental aspects of a design system. Front-end components are a great and practical way to help extend those themes throughout development and maintenance phases. Using UI components can help speed up the development process, reduce code duplication, and make it easier to maintain and update a website or application over time. 
The utilization of UI components fosters a consistent user experience leading to an enhanced usability and increased user engagement. Components are modular, reusable, and consistent in look and feel, making web pages or applications scalable. Again, this speaks to those fundamental themes of sustainability and adaptability. Isolated testing of components can help identify and fix bugs, which makes it easier to ensure our sites and applications are accessible. Teams of developers can collaborate more effectively by sharing and reusing components across different projects, again, assisting in sustainability. A single directory UI component groups all of the necessary code and associated files into one folder, streamlining file navigation and simplifying component sharing. So how we use components. To use components effectively in websites and applications, the concept of components needs to be initiated in the design process Catherine mentioned previously, and not just starting in the front end development. Communication is critical to the success of building components. As a front end web developer, it is my responsibility to work closely with my designer to collaborate on the component design and make sure we are consistently on the same page. In the past here at Atten, we've used components in our front end development process for at least the at least um, the last five years since I've started here. We have used contributed the contributed Drupal module components to help organize components in our custom themes. This module helps develop UI components by allowing you to specify a different directory for your components, libraries, twig files, and also you to register a unique twig namespace for those components. Here are the steps to set up the uh, set up components using the components module. So first we need to declare the namespace and the location of the components directory in your custom themes.info file. Then the custom component uh, directory, then we need to create the custom component directory and create the twig file for your components markup. Also include relative, uh, related assets such as JavaScript and style files. Not included in the module, but in our custom theme, we've configured our build tools to watch the component directory and build the CSS and JavaScript in separate directories in the root of our custom theme. Next, we uh, create the library for your custom your component CSS and JavaScript files in the themes library file. Next in your custom components directory, create a custom twig file to render the content and also make sure to add the line to attach the library you created for the component. So you can see that. Finally, we need to override the Drupal template to get the Drupal values or content, pass them down as props to the custom component. Most often for us, that's a paragraph template. As far as testing goes, we use, uh, we use a node and we call it the kitchen sink. And to do this, uh, we we first want to create the node and then override that node's template. Then we add all the components manually to that template. This is helpful to see all of the components listed on the page for internal QA review. And now I'm going to show you an example of our kitchen sink that we've created for the Neutrino Day website. So this is an example of that kitchen sink page. And I'm gonna just scroll through the page so you can see all of our components that we've created for this Neutrino Day website are listed here. 
So alongside or along the uh, along with the kitchen sink page, we've also created a few pages that duplicate exactly our Figma design to represent the 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 page uh, designed in Figma. And these pages are helpful to uh, to show how the components work within the uh, the pages layout. This also gives our QA and accessibility expert Michaela the opportunity to edit the content using Drupal, which tests the authoring experience as well as stress tests the components. These pages are what we use to share with the clients for review. This space is advancing really fast and now things are easier and more powerful using CL components or Drupal core's single directory components module. CL components is the precursor to single directory components, which was added to Drupal core version 10.1. And both modules are developed by Mateo. The two modules are not identical, but share many similarities. Both obviously share the core principle of a single directory component where all the component files are centralized in a single directory. These two modules are automatically, will automatically create the library by detecting relevant CSS and JavaScript files. So you no longer need to create your library for your components. Single directory components have a very similar com dot component dot YAML structure to CL components. Both work with the CL server module, which provides integration with Storybook, a component QA and development environment. Our kitchen sink page now can be replaced by a much more useful and powerful Storybook. Using this setup, we'll also actively watch your components and automatically update Storybook when changes are made. Both modules work with the CL uh, generator, a separate module for quickly scaffolding components using a CLI. As far as differences go between the two modules, when using single directory components, the components folder has moved from forward slash templates, forward slash components to just forward slash components. The biggest differences in uh, is introduced with the concept of slots in addition to props. Props are for simple data structures such as strings, numbers, booleans, and arrays. They will be escaped, so typically not suitable for data containing markup or twig template strings. Slots are used for content or markup. Anything passed into a slot will be rendered as a, an inline twig template. This makes it appropriate for nesting components, templates, or themed content from Drupal. For example, you could use it to render a responsive image or a formatted field. Here are the steps to set up the custom component or your a, a, comp, a custom component using the CL components module. Again, it's very similar to the single directory component. So first we need to create your UI component folder within your custom themes directory. And this is where you need to add all your relevant files. And in these two screenshots, it just shows kind of an, a couple examples. And also in the screenshot, I've demonstrated a convention we came up with adding our JavaScript and SCSS files within the source directory. Then we have our custom themes build tools set to watch that directory and then add the generated um, files to their appropriate folder. So we have a folder for the CSS and a folder for JavaScript. This one has uh, CSS and JavaScript. So all the rendered um, files go there and that allows us to watch and compile it. Uh, we use this structure as well as custom theme functions that unset the JavaScript file within the source uh, directory and that avoids it from being added twice. Next, we need to create the custom twig 
file to render the content. And then we need to create the component YAML file to define the component itself. This is used to auto-generate the library of assets and also uh, used to extend the functionality of CL components. If you'd like your component to work within Storybook, you need to create a stories YAML file to define its arguments, argument types, and stories. So here's a couple examples of that. And for testing, we've, uh, we continue to convert a few of our Figma files functionality uh, within using CL components. Sorry, let me start over. For, uh, for testing, we, we continue to convert a few of the Figma designs to functional pages. Uh, but now with CL components, we can replace our kitchen sink page with Storybook. Uh, we'll still, we are currently still in that transition of moving from Kitchen Sync to Storybook, so we only have a few examples. Uh, so here's Storybook running on a, an example Drupal site, and here are a few of the components that you saw in the Kitchen Sync page, but now rendered in Storybook, and then you can use the controls to change the, the content, or if that particular component has different argument types, you can change what uh, kind of variations you see. And then these are examples of different stories. So we have, uh, this is a, an argument type with a an option for the arrow, or if you, uh, select normal, it would remove the arrow. And those are those prop types that can be passed down to uh, those components. So this is, again, this is a fully built out uh, example of storybook. We're just in that process of moving over. So with these uh, modules, we can now effectively build uh, powerful design systems that are adaptable, sustainable, and accessible with our UI components built within Drupal. And thanks for all your time. And that's it for components and our front end development process. Now I'm going to pass it off to Justin so he can show you how all this works within the Mercury authoring tools. Oh, just muted there for a second. Thanks, Brent. Um, yeah, so, so far we've heard from Catherine about thinking about design and creating designs as a cohesive system. Uh, Brent's walked us through some of the technical aspects of how to publish design systems um, as a series of front-end components. I'm going to talk a little bit about Mercury Editor as a tool for empowering, again, marketers and editorial staff primarily for uh, to create content using that design system and those components. So I'm going to talk just a little bit through what the features of Mercury Editor are. If you've seen any of these presentations in the past, it's going to be really uh, familiar to you, or if you've used Mercury before. Um, Mercury, at its core, provides really easy to use drag and drop content editing for Drupal. Mercury is, first and foremost, a Drupal module. Um, it is available for download on Drupal.org. It is currently under heavy active development. And I should say that as a client services agency, um, the work that we're doing for Mercury is largely driven by client projects. And Mercury Editor is going into essentially every client project that we're running right now. And we're pushing code back to Drupal.org as we make headway on client projects. Um, it is available on Drupal.org. As I said a second ago, there's an alpha release. There's a more current dev release. Um, we're pushing to that quite frequently, and there will be a stable release by the end of the calendar year 2023. Um, Mercury, first and foremost, again, provides no code drag and drop editing. It's built on layout paragraphs, which in turn is built on paragraphs and a number of other very widely used um, systems in Drupal that have existed for a really long time and are well adopted something that was really important to us as we kind of evaluated what we wanted to build as far as an authoring experience. 
Uh, Mercury provides styles management. We'll dig into that. It, it provides a way for managing styles in a central location that makes it easy, again, to base the content authoring process on some of those style choices that, again, are, are uh, rooted or um, founded in the design system. It provides a streamlined UI, which we'll take a look at here in a second, just for working with content. And it's really focused, again, on the needs of editorial and marketing staff. Um, and then finally, Mercury works with that custom component library. And so the whole idea was, the whole uh, goal for us was to create a system that made it really easy for authors to leverage design systems to publish content. And Mercury does that in a really kind of technical detail. Mercury does that using paragraphs under the hood. So if you're familiar with the paragraphs module in Drupal or worked with that in the past, that's what we're using in Mercury to make those components available. And then that in turn makes all of the kind of theming internals and all of the development internals uh, in Drupal available to Mercury. Okay, great. So with all that, I'm gonna toggle over here to a live demo. Uh, this page should look quite familiar at this point to what we have been looking at throughout this presentation. This is the homepage for Neutrino Day, showing here some of those components that Catherine first talked about from a design perspective that we saw in her Figma files. Then Brent talked about from a development perspective that we saw represented um, in those single directory components. Um, this is the home page. I'm just going to take a quick look at kind of what the process is like for content authors using Mercury. To do that, I'm going to go over to the add content option. And just real quick, for those of you who might not be familiar, this is just running the Jin admin theme, which is, an ex I, I think, the most widely used admin theme at this point in Drupal. Um, it works awesome out of the box for providing a really just easy to use, elegant um, admin experience. So that's what this toolbar across the top is being provided by Jin, as well as a tool toolbar down the left. Nothing specific to, to Mercury happening there. I'll go over to the add content page and click on basic page. At its core, Mercury simply replaces the content creation and content edit screens in Drupal. When you go to create content, new content, um, on a content type that has been turned on with Mercury Editor or enabled to use with Mercury Editor, the edit form is, is moved over to the right into this edit tray, which we can easily kind of move out of the way or bring back. So any kind of metadata, taxonomy, uh, workflow states, et cetera, would be available over here on the right. We can give our content a new title. Although this title, just because of the way we have the design configured for Neutrino Day, this title doesn't really impact content on the left. On the left, we have this single option to add a section. This is being driven by an integration between layout paragraphs and Mercury. So any layout paragraphs fields will be automatically turned on in edit mode when you're on the content creation or edit screen. I'll hit add a section, this pop up with this section. I'm going to leave this as a one column. I'll go over to the styles drawer or styles tab. And again, we see some of those uh, geometric shapes that Catherine was talking about that have been pushed out as simply as classes uh, that are referencing images. We can choose our background, hit save, and it drops this section immediately onto the page. We're going to move into the section here, and we can see this little plus button kind of hanging out behind the add section. I'll click that. This is where we really get a sense for that component library sort of coming to life in Mercury. So all, all of the different components that have been described in the design process are available. It, it, in its simplest way, you could think of them as all available as components here in this menu. I'm going to add a new heading, grab some text, and paste that in. Switch this to heading two. Go over to the styles tab, choose normal weight hit save, and that component is immediately dropped onto the page. I'll go back over, hit the plus button, choose the date and location component. Again, we saw that briefly when, as Brent was showing us in Storybook, and also kind of got a look at that in the Figma files for the location. Just again, copy some text here. Set in, hit save, and it drops that component onto the page. 
Um, working with Mercury gives us the freedom to kind of move these items around on the screen. Again, kind of the drag and drop capability of Mercury was a huge, a huge factor for us in um, creating this in the first place. I'm going to hit the plus button again, add a text component. This particular example is using CK Editor 5, if you all are familiar with that at all. I'll add a link here, give this a title. Again, something that we saw from Brent just a couple minutes ago, hit save, it drops that component onto the page. I can again place this where I want it. And that's looking pretty close to the homepage. At any point I can save my work, hit the done button. Things run a little slow with Zoom and the local development environment here. Um, so this now we're looking on looking at the, the front end view of the page again, kind of an exact representation, or rather the edit screen was more or less an exact representation of what we see on this screen as well. I'm going to go back in, hit edit. We'll just take a look at a couple more of the features here of Mercury. Um, Mercury provides these preview tools at the top, so at any time I can toggle over to the uh, mobile view, choose from a number of presets. We just have three thrown in here as defaults. This is all configurable through the admin screen for or the, the configuration screen for Mercury. But this would allow you to create content and then see exactly what the impact of that content is in mobile. So if we had a section, if we had a three column section, we could see how those columns break in a mobile environment. I'm going to go back to the desktop view. Now that we have our three column section, actually I'll add another section here and we'll throw some media in. So we will do another one column and then inside our one column, reach back there and grab the plus button, go down and add a video, add some media, choose the demo reel, insert selected, hit save. And it again, drops that content. Uh, immediately in place in this live preview screen. I'm going to add some of the referenced speakers. Speakers on this particular, in this project, are content types or there are other nodes. I'm just going to add references to those. So I'll click the plus button, add a person reference, start typing the person's name, and go over to styles and choose card which again is one of those component types from our component library. I'll add a second speaker, person reference, get this person go. Oh, actually wrong uh, style there. So I'm gonna go again to card and then add a third. And actually just to, as a shortcut, I'll just duplicate this really quick, drag it over, hit edit, change this reference to Sam. Hit save and kind of get a sense for how that works. Uh, this is looking pretty good. And these components, again, are derived from the design system and the component library. However, it's a little different than the design that uh, the folks at Sanford ended up settling on for the homepage. They wanted to go with a kind of a, a more horizontal presentation of these speakers. So just to demonstrate that, I'll add a, another section here, drag this speaker into our new section edit the speaker, and I'll choose the featured style for this. So we get this new style again, just the uh, direction that they wanted to go for this content. I'll add another section, drag the speaker up into here. One of the goals for Mercury was to provide tools again to marketing, primarily to marketing and editorial staff for working on kind of the design and presentation of content right in the context of that content. And again, that's kind of what we're, what we're seeing here. I'll make this one the default view, which is very similar to feature, just a little bit smaller. And then finally, in this last section, I'll edit the section, change it to a one column. Uh, this just says, what do we want to do with the content that was in the tertiary column? Where do we want to put that? Content is the only option for a one column layout. Hit save. And then one more time, I'm going to change this style down to the default. And that's looking now more or less exactly like the actual homepage. I'll just add one more section here before we wrap up this piece of the presentation. 
I've added a section. I'll go in and add now an image gallery. Add media, grab an image, insert selected. I'll add another image, add media. Let's just go one page further here, insert selected. And then we'll just do that one more time, add media. And next page, and go. And hit save. And it drops that now that slideshow component right on the page in a way that we can interact with, see if that's see if we're kind of happy with the order and the selection of images. Um, in this case, the design was intended to go full screen when there's an image gallery. So I'll go back into my section, click on the styles tab, change this width to full, hit save. And then once again, that updates immediately in that live preview. This is now well on its way to looking exactly like the actual homepage, hit save, done to get out of the editor. And we have a new homepage looking really close to the, the actual existing homepage.